guys, welcome Chris here, CG Aviator in the cockpit of the PC-21. And in this video, I'm going to switch off my engine and demonstrate the VOR force landing. Now this is a technique that I'm trained to do and well practiced, I did it for real life in the short staccano. But first things first, you need to action any immediate actions, bold face, convert any excess speed to altitude, trim out for the best glide and in this aircraft it's 140 knots and of course turn towards your nearest airfield. There's a whole host of checks that requires to be done but I'm not focusing on those this time around. But I need to figure out my glide performance and in this aircraft we should be able to get two miles per thousand feet of altitude lost. So if I work out my range and I know I need to get to high key at 3,000 feet I can figure out how much altitude I need and how much excess I have. So confirming 109.2 for Inverness, we've got the bearing pointer pointing at our airfield. We've got the range currently at 9.3. And the course bar is set up for runway orientation. So about nine miles, if I half that, that gives me four and a half, add on my 3,000 feet for high key at seven and a half, and I'm just passing 12 and a half thousand feet, so I have 5,000 excess feet available. So options, I could restart the engine, but I'm not going to. I'm currently tracking a little bit to align myself with the runway orientation, extended center line. But the PC-21, or at least this model I found, has more drag than I'm used to in the Takano. So I'm going to accelerate down towards my one-in-one -one glide slope, and more on that in just a sec. I'm going to accelerate early. So as I come left, I can call accelerating with my range. And I'll select 20 degrees nose down and allow the speed to build. What I'm looking for is my altitude in thousands of feet to match my range in miles. And once the two of those match, I'll be on my one in one and then I'll select 10 degrees nose down. Of course, it's really important for the altimeter to read above ground or above airfield level. But Inverness is very much sea level, give or take, so it's not such a concern this time. My MDH in this case is 3,000 feet, but I have practiced this in real life down to 1,000 feet, and I'll do that in another video. So approaching 5,000 feet, 4.7 miles, I'll start to bring the nose up, and I can also start to see the ground breaking out. In this case, I'm focusing on leveling at 3,000 feet for my force landing pattern and monitoring my speed decay because I want to maintain a minimum of 140 knots. So I need to give myself options in case I run out of energy and I need a plan B. I can talk to air traffic and tell them I'm field in sight to tower or they may give me a single frequency approach. I'm also confirming that everything is set up in cockpit and that if I need to, I can pull the handle because the priority is me being safe, not the aircraft. Next, I need to pick my high key position. So high key is gonna be here, low key is gonna be here, and I've got a secondary low key if I choose to go for the other runway. Because the wind is light, I could convert to any runway. Now I'm keeping my awareness up of my speed and my position, and if I get to high key with at least 2,500 feet, I'll just delay my pre-landing checks and demonstrate this force landing spiral overhead. A little bit of weaving just to keep uh, sight of the ground. And I'm approaching the overhead so I can call high key with intentions and of course that's full stop. From here I'll look at my visual reference on the ground for low key, about a 30 degree bank turn, keeping 140 knots. I'm aiming for low key at 2,000 feet. And I can see the threshold under the wing. So if you're liking the content, please remember to like and subscribe, help support the channel. And after my approach, there'll be a credits reel that has a few top tips on how I recorded this. So parameters are good. Gear comes down, 2,000 feet, 140 knots. And now the gear and the flap has traveled to takeoff, we will complete the rest at 130 knots as the best glide speed. So here's the gear check and the flap check. Now notice how many times I check the runway because it's really important to monitor the sight line. So if the runway starts going up in my canopy, I know I'm going low and I need to cut the corner. But as it is, it is looking nice. Once my landing is assured, I'll select down flap. 
Once I go through 600 feet, I'll commit to the landing. If I'm not in a good place to commit to the landing, then I can still pull the handle. Next is a two-stage flare, because it's a high rate of descent. About 110 knots for the threshold. And flaring. And thank you for watching.